What is going on, everybody? Bobby Fathom and Eric Sheet Tabor. We did our first look for the PGA week earlier this week, and now we are going to be talking about some of the actual plays we're going to be making and some of the things to do. Lots of plays out there, not quite as loaded as last week. So we're going to try and figure this out and hopefully uh, a repeat performance. I mean, at the moment, that sounds incredible, but uh, to deal with all the what could have, should have been things, I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but I would take another run. I know we don't have a million this week, but we can try and win the 250K. And uh, Sheets, overall thoughts on the Valspar and uh, what your sort of, uh, any sort of a general approach or paying down and paying up, any middle, mid tiers, what, what, what are your sort of overall thoughts before we jump into it? So again, I found it interesting the way we did the content to do the, the, the preview before I even had any projections going, just to kind of see what I thought was going to happen and what, what ended up happening when now the, the actual plays out here. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I thought about which I, I think I am going to lean a little bit is this idea of giving a little, not, not Xing out, but giving a little lower weight to those people that had the big run down the stretch deep into deep into the, into the late afternoon Mondays on the short turnaround, the ones that didn't withdraw and give maybe a little bit of a bump to those who, who missed the cut or at the very least, you know, didn't have like a big stressful day. For whatever reason on on the sunday right um and the one thing about that you know i, I learned from uh, from rick's podcast you know, rick run good obviously he's the best is that this course does actually reward um accuracy off the tee more than a lot of other uh, courses um so i was just curious who i would get um given given that and uh unfortunately i got someone who i was afraid i was going to get to I'm going to have to deal with uh, psychologically when we get to this range. Um, but <laughs> my overall view is that it's really close in a lot of different tiers. Um, and yeah. This is just from my sheets and stuff. And even from an ownership perspective, I'm not seeing anybody really dominate the board at any level. Um, right. So, uh, you know, two ways to approach that i wonder what your what your thoughts are either one way to, to approach situations like that is well cool we just don't worry about ownership or the other way is to just really just be the stick stickler and say I, i'd rather have the guy six percent on than the guy eight percent on um how, how do you how do you deal with with, with slates like that that's an interesting question um in general with golf i would rather try and get the guy who's one or two percent on because the okay. variance is just so insane right and, and you don't especially when like especially when you have tier guys like like you know, for example, and by the way, I like, I always like Kazai, or I still am going to play the, play the rush or whatever you want to call it. He's been really good at eight of his last 10 tournaments. He's really, he's been one of the better performers in his price range, but now he's 7,200 and he's going to have significantly more ownership than other guys I like. Whereas if this tournament was played three weeks ago, I don't think that would be the case. So I would rather play the 4% guys in some cases over a guy like that. Although because of my, my, my affinity for this guy, I probably am going to still end up over the field on him. But something like that, you're like, you've got four guys at 7,200. I like all of them very much, but I will probably try to lean. And Svensson's my favorite, but he's a little bit higher owned. So maybe I would lean towards, you know, the, the 4% uh, guy who no one's going to play in Carlos Ortiz. Um, I, I do think trying to get any extra advantage you can with ownership is helpful uh, if you have the players rated similarly. But if, if, if you do really, really like somebody, I think this is one you could just go ahead and just com you know commit to the ones you really, really like. And I'm looking at even like people's cash games ideas and they seem to be very different from one another. So that even speaks more to that it's very spread out um, this week. Uh, how, how do people usually play cash and golf? Do they usually play stars and scrubs? Do you usually play middle? It, it's really slate dependent. Um, Is that right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, they, they tend to tend to usually find one guy in the low to mid sevens, but they also tend to try and play the more middling middling guys. I guess they, you'd say they middle out a little bit more often unless there's like, right? like John Rom, except for John Rom is, is another exception because – like we said, even when he fails, he stopped twinning everything usually, um, except for last week. Although he didn't end up that far away from it. I don't know where he ended up, probably in the 40s. Well, interest, interestingly, you, you brought up FanDuel. For the, if you guys ever play FanDuel, you, you, you'll you notice that, I guess the way the, the, the pricing works, whatever, you, you end up much more stars and scrubs on FanDuel Absolutely. than you on, on draft teams. That is for damn sure. Um, I definitely am, am very stars and scrubsy on, on FanDuel. And for some reason... After just and that's really weird. Uh, oh, there it is. Um, yeah, I just entered my first my my. I played one lineup on FanDuel and that's it. And I end up with usually last week I played all. You know, I think I played JT Morikawa and Rom together. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. Morikawa was the one who hurt me. <laughs> like you know, 
But uh, but let's get into it. Let's pull up your screen and let's let's start yeah. going through tiers. We don't have Kenny this week. We're sorry not to have him. He's going to be with us in the future going forward. We're just going to make Mr. It. Mr. Cam Smith to make the top five. Yeah. Hey, by, by the way, though, I, I, lo- I love that. I love that call. That we, and by the way, we really did uh, get there. It's funny because you were saying about how on, on one of our things that, that you don't, you know, you, some of your guys you wouldn't have had except for the 150, which I understand is how you do it when you script and everything yeah. like that. I would say that I, I felt really good about last week. I mean, I finished 14th in the uh, 555 also with five out of six. And it was, I think it was the best five out of six that, that was out there. Because I was committed to Cam Smith, Paul Casey, Tommy Fleetwood, and Patton Kazire. And wow. they, were, they were four of my top six own players, along with Joaquin Neiman. And I can't remember who the sixth was. But, oh, and John Rom. Um, but, uh, but, but so I felt really, really good about the, the, pro, the approach last week. And it was a lot of guys that we went back and forth on and that we talked about. But, I, I, you know, those were the guys I was going to stick with. So let's get into it. Let's talk about the first tier. Who are you looking at the most? Because I think you could make a great argument for everybody above 10K. And even down at, you know, the guys just beneath them are, are all pretty awesome plays as well. So what, what are you doing up here? So I'm going to stick with my, um, with what I said the other day and, and what, well, so the three guys, I do like three guys uh, quite a bit over 10 K. Uh, one is JT second. And listen, I'll eat my hat. Cause I, I, I said that this guy just never shows up, but this week he does. And that's uh, Colin Marikawa. And then the third guy was um, is, is Xander, who I did imagine was going to show up. And the other thing that I mentioned was that I would like to lean towards the guys that maybe didn't do as you know didn't have to play until Monday. And so you get Colin Morikawa and Xander, who both I believe missed the cut last week. Um, so I, I actually do prefer those two guys, all else being equal, right? Because if I like put all three of them, JT, Morikawa, and Shuffle. Um, I currently have um, JT about 21%. I have Marikawa about 19. Shoffle 13 I have listed, but I always give him an extra like 2-3% above what he projects because people do like to play him, um, uh, especially in the bigger in the bigger stuff. Mm-hmm. So um, he is not going to be – I think he's going to be a little chalkier. So I like all three of those. I, I'm not getting as much uh, of the others. Uh, DJ – or a Hovland, which, which is, you know, kind of bizarre since they were clearly two of the two best of those five last week, right. for sure. Um, but that's just what I'm getting this week is, is, is those other three is, is JT Morikawa and Shaw. Yeah. Accuracy off the tee. And you, you really get that with these tough, this top group this week, we, you know, we don't have to, these guys are all pretty, pretty yeah. awesome. I'm, I'm going to have exposure to all of them. My, my first instinct is the guys I'm going to be the most ahead of the field are, are Hovland, Morikawa, and Shofle, and probably be a little underweight, meaning like 10% of JT um, uh, and DJ. But I really don't think that we're talking about a huge discrepancy. I, I do like Shofle this week. I liked it. Even if he does get a few extra points, like you said, and you're right, he usually does. Um, I still like the idea of playing him at, at lower. Like we don't, he's still going to be lower owned than we're used to getting it before. And, and, and that, that, that's, a, that's appealing to me, especially because we don't have, you know, John Rahm is not here. There's still a couple guys who are not in this tournament. And uh, I, I just think he does get overlooked a little bit. So those are my top three right now in this range. But I do love JT. And I think when DJ goes on these runs, it scares the hell out of me not to have him at all. So that, that, that's sort of my, my thing. I, I like the 10Ks. I like the 9Ks. I'm going to do my best to stay away from most of the 8Ks as, as a general theory, I think, to uh, this week. Um, because I love the 7K range uh, for upside. So I'm going to play up and down. All right, uh, nine, 9K range. Uh, who's standing out for you? Because I keep thinking that, okay, at some point, people will start stop and then they just don't, you know what I mean? They're going to, they're going to get off of Fitzpatrick now after kind of not looking like the best of himself for them for most of the last few tournaments. And he's, he's not a high scoring guy, which I know it's funny because like everybody thinks about where you finish. And when we talk about these, Oh, you he tops twenties, he the top tens. And that's sort of the way that the golf lingo goes. But the truth is points are important. Guys who go for it on par fives are important in general. Uh, guys who tend to be streakier tend to have higher scoring ranges. Guys like Sam Ryder, who might be plus three some weeks, but he ends up with a better score than the guys who are minus minus four by the end of the week. Um, I want to try and embrace that kind of stuff, but I, I'm just bringing that up because Fitzpatrick is in this range. Answer fits that t- category a little bit in this range. Um, you could maybe make some argument about Shane Lowry in the same cat, same same breath, and Hatton and Oosthuizen. So they're all sort of guys who you don't really think of as that high variance scores, although Oosthuizen had a big scoring week last week. Um, 
Usos and I think it, like I always like him better to win the tournaments or come in the top five than I do to to necessarily get all of his. It's like a Daniel Berger. Daniel Berger gets all of his points from where he finishes and doesn't actually, you know, he only made I think two bogeys last week and still somehow didn't win the tournament. Uh, Berger. Anyway, that, that's just sort of my overall thing. So in this range, it's it's I, I'm having a little bit of trouble of which one of the which ones of these guys to go with, and maybe it's as simple as taking a the the one who stands out the most for me is Sam Burns. Um, I'm definitely going to go back to Fleetwood. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care about, oh, he's too expensive now. I'm absolutely going to take a shot again. Um, but Sam Burns is the one who sort of is different than that. He's going to be the most popular or one of the more popular in this range. But I, I really do like him. And I like uh, Fleetwood and I like Kokrak. I'm trying to decide what to do with the high-owned answer, the high-owned Oosthausen. Um, I don't think I'm going to play Hatton, but that scares me a little bit. And I think I wanted to be a, way ahead of the field on Fitzpatrick. But it's harder now that I think the entire field is on him. So what are you doing in this range? Yeah, my top three rated guys are um, the top three, in my opinion, highest owned guys in this range. Um, with the exception of, I don't really like answer that much this week and he's, he's going to be high owned. So he, him, I can fade, but the three guys are guys that you mentioned uh, Fitzpatrick. We could dream that people won't play him because of his performance last week, but that's just not going to happen. He's going to be, I, mean, I haven't projected at 18%. I'd be, I would be surprised if it were less than 20. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I like him and I like uh, Oosthausen, like you said, um, and, uh, and Burns. Those are, those are my top three at the nine K range. And just below that would be, uh, would be Hatton. And again, nothing earth side. They're all going to be double digits. I guess, like I said, if I want to be thematic, I could say that, you know, Oosthausen had kind of a run into, I shouldn't say that. He didn't play that great on Sunday. Um, but you could maybe Sam Burns, maybe uh, he, he, I thought he might be a candidate for withdrawal uh, because I mean, he, he, he was in, he had a shot and then he just kind mm -hmm. of imploded. Um, so uh, maybe he's not rates to be as sharp. So if I had to cross, not cross off, maybe pare down Burns a little bit, maybe pare down um, Oosthausen just a little bit. Um Lowry at 20 at, at 11 percent it's probably about where he should be um so I have no real big take here you know aside from the fact that I think the best play Fitzpatrick is the highest home um so you know if, you, if you're going to hand build you know probably try to play Fitzpatrick with with some you know you're obviously going to play a bunch of 7k guys try try to play the low you know try to get those like Ortiz's and those four percent guys you know um, if you're going to play, uh, you know, uh, the, the chalk here of Fitzpatrick. But the point is, I don't really have any really meaningful pivot at that price range from him. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, so so I, I just kind of like him. Yeah, um, I. Uh, yeah, I, I, I understand everything you're saying, and, and, and I think it's OK, like if you're going to eat some some chalk, it's again, it's not the worst chalk to eat. Um, wait, did I did I ask you about Brooks? You did. I, you did not. And I always, I just never get to him ever. No, I know, but there's, it, yeah. Okay. It's just, it's just because uh, last week was a week where everybody did because it was the players and, you know, right. even the narrative of him playing well, partly he had, he had a little bit of a bad draw too, by the way. Um, but I, I'm, I'm sort of open to the idea of a low owned Brooks personally. Um, but I, I don't, again, I don't know. I don't, I, I do like this. I do like this range, but it feels like a, a bunch of guys who are, again, I have rated fairly similarly and I don't have that all the way through. I'm not, you know, and we'll get into this 8K range next because I'm okay with fading some of this chalk or at least being lower on it than the field is. Um, what are you, what are you doing in the 8K range? And then I'll go with mine. Okay. This is going to be the death of me to say here. Um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll just relate what I have and then what I'm doing, which might not exactly be the same thing. So my, my, my top rated, 8K guy, and I was afraid of this, is 8,300 Webb Simpson. Okay. <laughs> and he was the death of me last week. I, I spent like, I did my own video last week before we did our own. And of the 30 minutes video, I spent 15 minutes describing why Webb Simpson was a good play. Um, and, and then I ended up like going back and forth to him and Henley. I played at 22 22 because I had a, a ticket for it. And I was between him and him and Henley, him and Henley. And I just convinced myself that, that, that Webb was like a good play. And he was never in contention to make the cut from the first hole. I and mean, he just wasn't. <laughs> um, gave me a little tease, oh, only minus four going into the last day. I'm like, ooh, can he get plus one? No, no, no chance. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with him. Obviously, something is wrong. Um, and 
probably 8,300 for a reason. Um, but he does rate really well for me. So when I script, he's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna show up. Um, but I'm not gonna play him in any of my big lineups. I don't think. Next guy is another one who that, this is a struggle because I gave out in our video last week. Keegan Bradley is my favorite sub sub seven K guy, right? And and even you said, oh shit, now I got to play some freaking Keegan Bradley, right? <laughs> and, and and he almost he almost cost us a fortune. You know what I mean? Like he, yep. he got into first and then he decided to, you know, to put a couple of couple balls in the, in the water. Yeah. Which people do. Um, how he rebounds from that is anybody's guess. Um, but he's, you know, he was, he was projecting well going into last week. He was, he's just been getting better in all the models. Is he worth the price increase from 6,800 or whatever he was to 8,400? He's still showing up as a decent play, but now I'm looking at 15% ownership. Plus name value, people saw him within 10 last week. I don't know, man. But he does show up as the second best AK play. The third one, I have to thank you for this. When we were going over our original plays uh, the other day, I mentioned this guy and you said, Don't you want to play this dude? He always, you always play him. I'm like, oh yeah, I did mention. And just just for my own sanity, yes, I will play Cameron Tringali again. Uh, uh, he shows up, he looks very nice, he's AK, he's not gonna win, he's not gonna my yeah, opinion, not not going to miss the cut. Not, not going to miss the cut. Maybe, maybe if he plays well, he could go top ten. Um, fine by me. And only ten percent. Maybe that's a little low. Maybe he'll end up being higher because um, yeah, people like to play him too. Um, but uh, those are the three that I'm struggling with. So Webb Simpson, uh, uh, Keegan Bradley, and Cameron Tringell. So I, I, I'm not saying I'm going to have no Keegan Bradley. I'm just going to be well below the field. Um, I, don't blame, I don't blame you at all. I just think that's just going to be right more than often than not, and yeah. that's, that's what I'm playing. Um, yeah. uh, the guys who I, I really like, my favorite in this range, is Alex Noren. Ooh, um, I like that. And I like uh, the low-owned Jason Day and Bubba Watson, but I don't need to do much to get ahead of the field because no one's going to play them. No one's going to play Mr. Bubba. So I, I kind of like that, those ideas and, and uh, bubble with an up and down week, which we're used to seeing from him. But uh, I, I do think that he's kind of an interesting one to get a little bit off the board on this, in this range. Uh, I think what also like from the pivots off of these guys, I think Tringale is the pivot off of like Russell Knox, who's going to be really popular. I mean, so. Bradley, but uh, you could include Kevin Kisner and, and even Webb to some extent as somewhat pivots off of what I think is going to be pretty chalky Kevin uh, Russell Knox and Keegan Bradley. Um, I think Gary Woodland is getting a little too much ownership for me, although I do like him, but again, I'm sort of mostly going to stay away from this range. So it's going to be Norin a, a tiny bit, which just means like 10%, maybe a little bit more of Bubba or, and, or Jason day. And then I'm with you on the taking some shots on Tringale at 8k. So that's, that's pretty much the guys I'm using. And I, I might have sprinkles of the other ones, but I'm just not going to be targeting them as a main focus. So I'm going to bring up another guy who we talked about the other day. And I used him as an example. I was comparing uh, Harold Varner to, um, to Pat and Kazire. And, and they were both 6,900 or 6,800, whatever it was, going into last week. And they finished one stroke ahead of each other, two strokes ahead of each other. Varner ended up maybe two strokes ahead of them. And as a result of that, for some reason, Varner is 8,600 and Kazire is 7,200, um, I, I think. So, so, and the re I guess one of the reasons for that is that people just saw Varner's name at the top of the leaderboard for a long time. Yeah. You know? um, and when he was not first, he was still on that first page, you know? Uh, yep. and, and, and so maybe that's why, whatever. So I was making the case the other day. I'm like, so how can you play Varner over there? And then you even, but then you said, yeah, but what if he's like really, really low on <laughs> as, as a result? Right. Um, so I will point out about Varner is that again, this was I was sweating all you know all the all the shots obviously the last couple of days, is that he ran really poor on the putting green. Yep. Those last two days he missed five footers like all day, and so you know I know how would you believe a lot of you know good golf analysts believe that that if you if you you know run poor with the putter you know that's actually a good sign. You know what I mean? For, for, for whatever, because the putting is just the most variant. And if he even ran normal with putting, we'd be talking about a totally different result. So he's obviously, he was striking the ball really, really well um, for four days, really. Um, I don't know if I could, you know, I don't know if I can make peace with it, you know, to play him at 8,600 when I can play, <laughs> I can play uh, Kazire, like you were saying, at 7,200. Um, but uh, if he's going to be 5% owned, um, I don't know. He's showing up as a decent enough player where I might have him. Yep. 
Um, I, I, think that's, I, think that's, I think that's fair. I'm not doing it myself, but I think it's fair. I do want to mention, even if you're, if you're not going to play Keegan Bradley and you're playing showdowns, Keegan Bradley has, has been in the top seven or better the last, in the first round of this tournament the really? last five times he's been here. Okay. It, it's a course he's done really, really well at. So, 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 so it, that, that whole thing that happened last week, you know, the, anybody who thought they were going to get a low, oh, cool, we could play Keegan Bradley where he's been great. You're, you're not going to get anything. It, it's just everything that happened last week combined with his, you know, his career at this course, he's going to just be so high on, but maybe you could play him in the, in the first day showdown instead of, uh, instead of in some of your main lineups, if you wanted to, a way of not totally fading him, but get, you know, getting a little exposure. So that's something I might consider doing too. Um, all right. Uh, do you mind if we go 70, 74 to 79? Because I, I have a lot of guys in the lower seven K's and I don't want them to be lost in the shuffle. So can we, can we start off with that? Yeah, we can do that, but it's interesting you say that because what I was going to say, when you said, what do you think of the seven K range? I was going to say that the reality is, is that the whole range is a big shuffle because there's so many guys that you yep. can play. Um, and this is maybe where you're supposed to just be a stickler for your ownership or, take stands in other ranges and just, they just shuffle like right. this range. And, and the fact that you came on and say, listen, we should, we should break this up. There's just so many plays. You're basically saying the same thing. So, right. so, so yeah, let's, let's, let's do that. So, so what do you want to start 7,500 and up? Yeah, we can do this with 7,500 and up. Okay. So 7,500 up again, I still think it's a shuffle, but I'll give you, I mean, maybe this is the whole range, but I'll, I got five guys that all look really close to one another. So I'll just read them off. So wise, Streelman, Harmon, um, uh, Vegas, and Griffin. I don't know if that's – that might be the whole range. I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know if I missed anybody. But but I, I like all those like almost identically. So I would probably shuffle them, you know, and because I'm looking at the ownership. So I got Wise at 9%, Streelman 6%, Harmon 8%. Um, I see Bazadenhut. I forgot him. Yeah, at 10%. Vegas 7%. Griffin, 8%. So I'm not sure which of these is going to be the 2% guy and which is going to be the 12% guy. So I'm probably just going to shuffle them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Um, uh, again, as I said, I want to be overweight on these guys. And you're not going to get a ton of ownership outside of a couple of guys. The, my favorite is Bazaden, Bazaden Hood above from 75 okay. to 79, but he's going to be the most popular. Is um, he? Is he? As my, that's my guess. I, that's I would, what I have him. I have him at 10, which is like higher than most. Oh, I think he's going to be higher than that. But yeah, okay. if he's at 10, I'm, I'm really on board. But I, I really do like the Zayden Hood. I think that he's a really solid play here. Um, I, I, I'm okay with the Streelman idea. I don't, I don't think he'll be popular. Um, no. I, I like Aaron Wise. I'm not crazy that he always gets ownership and that he is but not he didn't, but he, Listen, but he didn't last week. I thought he was going to. He was like I know, 6%. He didn't. In the end, he didn't end up getting there last week. He didn't end up there last week. That's yeah. true. But I have a feeling that people will go back to him a little bit this week. I'm good with, I like Aaron White. I believe in the talent. Um, it's So if I had to rank them, I guess, I would go Bezayden, who won, um, Wise, or Wise, then Harmon, then Vegas, then Molinari. Um, I have interest in all those guys. I'm not as high, I'm not as high on Mackenzie Hughes. Oh, I forgot Hadwin. <laughs> Hadwin, Bezayden, who are my two favorites. The other guys are the ones I'm using. I'm not into Weisberg or Mackenzie Hughes. Um, and again, you don't need to do much to get overweight on these guys because most of them are going to be fairly low owned. Um, all right. The seven, seven K to 7,500. Um, go ahead. Sheets. You want to start this one off? Cause I've got a bunch. Yeah, of Cause I actually don't have much. So, okay. so I'm curious to hear what, what your takes are. So my, I, I have two that I like above the others. Um, one is Mito Pereira who we could just add him, you know, just, just, he is literally the guy I, I never did. Right. So, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. Uh, Mito Pereira and the other one, as I've referred to 75 times in the last two days, is Pat and Kazire um, at 7,200. Go right back to that. Um, you know, look, it doesn't exactly fall within my narrative of fading guys that have that played through whatever, but it's not like he was in contention and he's only 7,200. So for you, know, I mean, who cares? Yeah, so, yeah. he's only 70. I don't need him to win the tournament. Um, right. So, so those are those are my top two. And then when I go down more, I'll go to the the bad hat guy, uh, Joel, Joel, Joel Damon, um, Hoffman, just okay, Schwab, Grillo. But I don't know if I'm going to get down to those guys. Yeah, okay. So I, I love Mito. Um, I know he'll be popular, but I really like him. And and it's not just because my girlfriend is Chilean. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I, I am uh, very into the 7200 range. I love Adam Svensson. 
and I, I, I really like Kazire as well, but I, I, I mean, I, I'm into the Canadians. I, I, I like the Svensson play a lot. I really like this kid. And I think he's, you know, I think he's a really, really like one to watch this year. Uh, in that same vein, another low owned guy I'll take a shot on, even though it's maybe not the perfect course for him is, is the Gala, who I just still believe in as a golfer. And I, I want to sort of be ahead of the field on him in general. I like Lanto Griffin next. Um, I, and then I like Denny McCarthy. Um, we should probably keep an eye out with Doc Redman. He looked pretty good at times last week, and we haven't seen him look good in a long time. <laughs> um, so he's a better golfer than he's been over the past year. And, and I'm just sort of keeping an eye out. I also like Carlos Ortiz, but the, the, the priority ones are going to be Svensson, Kazire, uh, Griffin, um, some Thigala, and then some Sam Ryder down at 7K flat. Uh, and it's because I, it's, Sam Ryder just makes the cut and seems to hold one from 150 yards every tournament, at least. He's, he's held the most balls, uh, out of it, which is a good reason to fade someone in general, but you don't need to worry about fading someone who's low owned anyway. Um, but I do like Sam Ryder quite a bit. So I, I want to bring up another guy who, you know, we, we haven't played in a little while, but given the, the layout of this course and you want to be accurate, uh, he's not showing up as such a great play for me. Did you think about any Brendan Todd at 7,100? I, I can't can't quite get to him to be honest. Okay. Um, uh, I'm not saying he won't end up in a, a lineup or two of mine, but okay. um, Brendan Todd and Amelia and and Grillo are the two I'm sort of staying away from. And these are two two totally opposite plays. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but I but I just thought that you know I don't know I, I haven't felt as good about uh, about Todd lately, but I but I'm, I'm I mean I'm okay with it. It's just not where I'm going personally. I, I want to add to one guy that you mentioned, and again I'll I'll be speaking out of turn here, but I remember Rick was talking about this guy a couple of different you know weeks ago. Is is the guy you mentioned, Denny McCarthy? See the thing about Denny McCarthy, he just has this reputation for being just like kind of like a putter savant. But mm -hmm. what a, apparently he's actually, and I forget what all the, the metrics were, but apparently his ball striking has actually been improving this year. Um, so he's like kind of sneaky because people will usually only play him on courses where you need to like put the lights out. But apparently he's been actually playing a little bit better and hitting it a little bit better. So, um, okay, that's uh, good to know. So I actually don't, I actually don't mind that. Okay, I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be opposed to getting a little bit of exposure there. Um, all right, now we have the uh, under 7K, which is you're always your least favorite and always usually one of my favorites. But some of my it's guys- usually my least favorite, and, and yet and yet I came up with Kaza with, uh, with what's-his-face. With, with, the, with the, yeah. With Keegan Bradley, who almost won the tournament. That's, yeah, that's right. And, and now the guy who ended up in the other one, uh, Harold Varner. I mean, hey. <laughs> right. With those guys. <laughs> um, all right, so who do you like below six? Uh, just based on the numbers, um, I, I'll-, I'll Pat Perez, first guy that shows up for me. Then um, David Lipsky. That's pretty much all I got. I, I have some interest in both those guys. Um, I prefer Perez. I think he'll be a little bit pop more popular, obviously, but it's still going to be a low enough number where I'm okay with it. I'm sort of d debating on Zach Johnson. Never a guy I love to play, but is really cheap. And I like some of the value. Again, I like double spending up this week if I can. And I, I have my eye on Lee Hodges as another another guy who we should watch out for at times this year. Um, last week was, you know, it's not ideal for him. Uh, I don't I can't remember if he made the cut or if he ended up just missing it, it, it which, whichever one it was. But I kind of I do like Lee Hodges. I think he's got some talent. And um, so I'm open with him. Um, a guy we mentioned who I'm not going to get a much exposure to, but maybe five percent is John Huh. Yep. Um, Hodges, Huh. Um, Von Taylor. Is, yeah, Hodges, Hodges made the cut this past week. Yeah, um, Von uh, Von Taylor, um, who I, actually is more because other people like him. And then the, I'm going to give a weird, a couple weird guys here, uh, like really weird. Well, oh no, I love Troy Merritt. Sorry, he's the he's Merritt is the one I like the best actually of of, of these guys. But the weird ones I like, I'm going to go with the the Corn Fairy guys a little bit. Uh, Joseph Bramlett at I mean, I'm serious when I say like no ownership. Um, I like that. I like the brand. And and I and I definitely want to get some get get a little bit of of these guys who are not projecting much. Um, Norlander is a is I think should be like in this like low sevens in this specific tournament. So I I just think there's like a little bit of of edge there. I, I and he's played really well at times over the last league. He just hasn't quite strung them together. Um, another one is uh, Kramer Hickok. This is actually a good course fit for him. And when he went on that run last summer, this might be, you know, it's just if you can get a little bit of that out of him, 
that price starts looking very interesting. Adam Smotherman, Steven Yeager, those are the guys who I'm, are my, my, they're all get weird plays. You know, I don't want to like overload any of these guys, but those are the guys who I'm just sort of filtering in as like five percenters on this, on this slate in my, in my large field stuff. So last uh, week we did the game and, and we, and, and Kenny had two, I had one and you had one. Let's see if we can improve on that. Uh, yep. you, you, well, you were dead on the withdrawal from, uh, from Hideki to that, to that one. So you were operating a little bit behind. Yep. Um, but uh, okay, let's see if we can't figure this out. I did so. cash. I did cash with my uh, in my two twenty two with my Hideki lineup. By the oh, way. really? Yeah, which is pretty wild because I got no no points out of them, obviously. Um, all right, so that's that's kind of ridiculous. I know it's really nuts. I was shocked. Um, yeah, I mean, he because not like he played, played two rounds and missed a cut. I mean, no, like, no, you got no points. It was the it was the Cam Smith, uh, Casey, and I mean that those were people don't realize that, that you know we had that pairing, so it seemed like oh yeah, yeah. That, that that specific pairing was probably. I keep forgetting, like I, I just figured it was chalky because you had it and I had it. Right. Like nobody else had it. Even the, even the other people at the leaderboards didn't have it for the most right. part. It was pretty right. nice. Um, all right. So who are you picking to win the tournament? I am picking Colin Marikawa. Okay. So Maury, um, I like the, the Morikawa call. I'm going to say that Hovland gets it done this week. Finally. Um, he's been, by the way, I think what was the so last week was his worst finish in however many tournaments. Uh, this week, I think that, uh, you know, look, I mean, what's the worst we got? He ended up 21st with a really high score because of the hole in one he hit and he had a couple, and he had an eagle, I believe, on top of it. Um, but I mean, this guy, you know, this second, fourth, first, first, uh, seventh, uh, all of his last 10, when one of them is not even on the board because it was a, it was a, a different event. Um, but I, I just really, really like him um, and I'm hoping he gets it done for me. He had a chance there on Sunday, man, and, and that would have been huge for my lineup specifically. I would have, I would have maybe been able to take it down. But anyway, um, go ahead with uh, with who you got, who you got nine k to get five to five. I just don't see for me Fitzpatrick making top five, and it kind of is weird, you know. We're doing this contest. I mean, what what am I playing him at chalk if I don't even think he can make? If I have no business thinking he can make top five. Anyway, well, he's only nine K. It's not like nine. Yeah, yeah. But I, I will pick. Um, I will pick Sam Burns. That's who I was going to pick, so I'm happy to hear it, and that gives him a little extra star for me. Because if we're both going to pick one, that's what I do. Um, now I'm sort of stuck because that's who I was going to pick, and the guy who I I like, but I'm I don't I don't want to pick Ustausen, even though I like him. That was who I was between. So yeah. yeah. Um, Shoot. Because I do, I do, I sort of like everybody in this range, but I don't love, I don't like, I like them as, like, the top 10 feels a lot better to me. Um, should I just stay, I, I'm not, okay, I'm not going to, I guess I'm not going to say that my bet is Tommy Fleetwood, but I do really like Tommy Fleetwood and, and Fitzpatrick, that I'm going to be playing a good portion of them. Um, but for top five, I think I am going to say Ustausen, just I think he has the best chance of those guys. I agree with that. Yeah. All right. Under... Uh, 9K to top 10. I'll take Tringali. All right. I like that play. Um, I will say, kind of want to go with one of my other guys, but I I'm, I'm, think I'm going to say Alex Norin, who is my favorite play in this range. So let's do that. Um, all right. Under 8K to make top 20. Well, just because I never get this other guy right, I'm not going to pick him for this contest. So I will go with – I just can't pick bad attitude just on, on sheer principle. I, can't, I don't know <laughs> if I'm going to pick him. And, you know, I would, I would take this other guy, but this guy had a bad attitude this week too. I, I, I had Brian Harmon. He, like, threw his club. I don't, I don't like that. Um, I'm between this guy and this guy. <laughs> Jesus, thing. Sheets, but did you see the high five that Streelman gave at when uh, when Hovland hit the hole in one? Come on, how do you not love this guy? No, I'm just kidding. You know, no, <laughs> I, don't, I just don't. Um, I, I don't know. I I, I kind of want you to go first. Okay, I'll uh, I'll take my under eight K guy. At the top twenty is going to be the a lower a lower one for me. I really like Hadwin, but I'm going to go with his countryman Adam Svensson. Shit. I really thought you were going to take this guy. All right, fine. I'll, I'll take it. I, I'm sorry to do this to him. I'm just going to curse him, but I will go Mito Pereira. 
That's who my other one is. I mean, literally. I, I know. Because if you were going to say Mito, I would have taken um, Kazire. So right. I was hoping you take one of those two, but but you snuck into Svensson. So I will, but I'm not, I'm not hedging. I'm going, I'll, I'll, I'll take Mito. Yeah, I like, I like Mito. I, and by the way, I, sometimes on these games, I, I am trying to find the lower owned ones too that I, that I, that I go for. And I think Mito is going to probably have about twice the ownership. So I'm, I, I'm not just saying my favorite guy. I'm saying the guys that could, you know, have a, give you a better chance to win. So I think I know who you're going to pick under 7K, but you can go ahead and, and throw it you out do, there. Huh? I'm almost positive. I know who you're going to say. We're just talking about making the cut, right? Yeah. Huh. Uh, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. While you're doing, while you're thinking real quick, I'm going to say, I forgot a, a name in the seven K's that I like a little bit too. That's CT pan and Kenny likes him as well, which he wasn't able to join us. I don't know. I guess I'll just go with the guy that my numbers. Are. I don't know who you think I was going to say. So I, just, I, 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 all right, I'll go Pat Perez. I that's guess. what I thought you were going to say. Oh, okay. He was like the only guy. I like. Yeah, I was either like, him or I was going to dumpster dive with John Hub, but I'll I'll I, I'll go with the like I just said I'll go with Perez. Just, just because the numbers liked him enough, um, I thought I just thought you'd go there, but um, yeah, I, I think I'm going to say Kramer Hickok here. Okay, uh, All right. and I think there's a chance that he if 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 he gets he can make a run. Um, Kramer Hickok, just so you know, for those of you that don't have access to the sheets, he's my third rated under 10k guy. Ooh. Oh, that's not true. The guy you like the most is uh, the, the 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 merit from earlier. Merit is the is my third. Oh yeah, merit is another good one that I like, and uh, yeah, and uh, you know, mixing in the, these groups with with the had wins, and then you know, some of my other priorities on this slate. I'm just throwing out some. Right. So, so oh, who over nine game. case? Who over nine case missing the cut? Oh, this one I actually think we're gonna over nine get, I think we're gonna get a couple of them. Um, What's funny is my first thoughts are trying to think of someone who played last week. So it's kind of, I mean, played, played deep last week. I'm, I'm going to go first yeah. because I got two guys and one of them is lower on and one of them I have rated like 15% ownership. So I am going to take the chance of the 50% ownership. Guy. I will say that Jason Kokrak misses the cut. Interesting. He's a guy I really like this week. Um, okay. I think that in spite of what I said, Brooks is more likely to withdraw. Yeah, that's the guy I was going to go back. To. He was the lower owner of the two that I like. Yeah, yeah and by the way, then that just proves something. So just because I like someone as a DFS play doesn't mean yeah. that it doesn't. I don't yeah. think there's a good chance that he that he busts. Yeah. I think there's a huge range of outcomes for him. So I'm going to say that uh, I'm going to say him. Although the, the 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 normal answer should probably be Fleetwood for most people here, but it's not going to be for me. Yeah, I couldn't do that to you. I appreciate it. <laughs> so <laughs> can't do it to my to my Tommy guy. Um, all right, guys. Oh, wait, so just to review this. Wait, so so uh, we have Morikawa and who did you Hovland. pick, Xander? No. Hovland. Hovland. Morikawa and Hovland. And then 9K was? Burns. Uh, we had Burns and Usti. Burns and Usti. 8K was Tringale and? Norin. Norin. Oh, that's going to be a stud play if that works out. I think he's going to end up being pretty chalky by the end. but I do Norin? That. Yeah. And then, and then 7Ks, we went. Um, I struggled, and then I forgot who I ended up with. Um, oh, Mito, Mito, and uh, and you ended up with um, who did you take for for uh, the seven K? Oh, I spent Adam Svensson. Svensson, right? And then six K, we went Perez and Hickok. Yeah, and then nine K to miss the cut, we went Brooks and Kokra. Yep, and uh. And I do want to just re reemphasize that I do still really like Adam Hadwin also, and a lot of other guys in these ranges. I just, it, you know, I just wanted to, uh, to, to, I like these guys just a little bit better. So, um, so we turned out Norin. Oh God, sorry. I wrote Norin really sloppy and I don't want to make, I want to make sure I get that right later. All right, guys. Well, oh, I'm going to real quick, well, before we get out of here and just a little shout out to Kenny, cause he came up with some pretty good stuff last week, guys, he likes a lot this week are some of the ones that we don't Ooh, um, and some that we okay. do. Uh, Shane Lowry. Oh, I, I, I told you this, right? Yeah. Lowry Knox, uh, Cam Percy. Which Ooh, there it is. There didn't it get is. there without, didn't get to that one. Um, Mito, Keegan Bradley, uh, CT Pan, Oosthausen, Jimmy Walker. Uh, Webb no. with a, Webb bad, with a big bad play would be dynamite. Yeah. I'm going to put him on my list because I agree with that. It's, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, he has uh, Oosthausen, Jimmy Walker, uh, Webb with a big, big old question mark, and DJ with a big old question mark. Hadwin and Fitz. Um, he's he's thinking that uh, you, you, he likes the mid range and, and doesn't want to focus as much on the top tier, which is a little different than my strategy this week. But uh, thought we'd drop it in there just in case because he's had some pretty good, uh, pretty good spot on shots uh, so far. So, all right, guys. Good luck to everyone this week, and uh, let's make some money.